All right, next up, we'll take a look at the applications of transition metals. So let's go ahead and take a look at what makes transition metals so useful for this application that we're going to talk about. Um, so as we said before, transition metals undergo redox chemistry, relatively easily and reversibly. Right, so they can change their oxidation state. Iron can go from plus two to plus three and back and forth a bunch of times without um, too much effort. And then the other part is that we can modify the ligands to control the structure slash property of compounds. And so, since we can kind of control its properties through um, controlling the ligands, and since they can have these reversible redox reactions, combined together, transition metals make great catalysts. Remember, the catalyst is something that reduces the activation energy of a reaction without it itself being consumed. And so there's plenty of examples of um, transition metals as catalysts, both biologically Right, you've got a whole lot of biological um, transition metals acting as catalysts in your body. For example, the hemes in your blood are based off of iron. So it's iron, which is grabbing that oxygen, transporting it, dropping it off somewhere else, and that kind of stuff. Another great example is photosynthesis. In photosynthesis, there is a, a core with some transition metals in it that basically um, allows plants to turn sunlight into energy, which is amazing. Um, and then of course there's biological applications and there's industry applications. Um, there's a lot of, lot of, lot of money to be made in learning how to make something cheaper and how to make something quicker and more efficient. So let me just give you an example. So here you're, you're seeing a, um, the structure of what's known as Grubbs catalyst. And so, what this guy does is it goes out and it grabs one molecule, grabs another molecule. Both of these have double bonds in them, and then it stitches them together. Um, so at this core, you see it's a, actually a ruthenium. And then you can see we've got all this kind of ligands that are highly engineered in order to make our substrates fit in perfectly here and make our catalyst behave the way we want it to behave. So it's all about um, the, the metal center's ability to do redox and our ability to control the ligand to make that metal center do what we want it to do. And so one final thing is the kind of generic catalytic cycle. In order to be a catalyst, you have to kind of uh, reform yourself at the end of the reaction. You can't be used up. And so let's take a look at that. First off, we're gonna start off with a met metal just attached to however many ligands are attached here. So N number of ligands. The first step that happens is what's known as oxidative addition. And so your metal comes into contact with what we're going to call Rx. R is what we're interested in. It's, it's some kind of, it's part of our compound that we want to make, maybe half of our compound that we want to make. And X is just some other thing that's, long, that, that's attached there. Your metal is going to self-insert itself into this bond. And so you can see it's split up between this bond and it split this molecule and insert itself in the middle. So that's the addition part. The oxidative part comes from the fact that this oxidizes your metal. So this goes from one oxidation state to a higher oxidation state. It doesn't have to start off at zero here. This could have some oxidation state, but it goes to a higher oxidation state. The second step is called transmetallation. And so what happens here is this catalyst that has one of these groups already on it interacts with another compound that you want it to react with. We'll call this one R2. So this is just kind of the other half of your molecule. And then it'll split itself in between that bond so that it has R1 and R2 attached to itself. And it'll kick out this MX that we've labeled here, right? So it's kicked out this other stuff. It's grabbed two halves of these molecules. And then in the final step called reductive elimination, oops, 
this is still this metal is still oxidized. In this last step, your metal goes back to its original oxidation state, whatever that is, and it kicks out your final product. So that's that R1, R2. And now it's stitched them together with a bond. So you can see how powerful this catalyst can be. You can take two pieces, maybe of a really big molecule, take two halves of it and stitch it together when that's not always feasible to do with other types of chemistry. So just know this generic outline um, of this catalytic cycle.